All right. So we're going to uh, wrap up with lesson 10. Uh, here we're going to address the uh, aggression cycle. From an anger management perspective, an episode where anger leads to aggression can be viewed as consisting of three phases, buildup, explosion, and aftermath. Together, they make up the aggression cycle. And one of the things that is pointed out here is the fact, and in anything that we do, whether it uh, concerns our, um, uh, if you have substance abuse issues and you have a tendency to relapse, or if you have the anger management issues and you have a tendency to act out aggressively, everything happens in a process, right? It's not just all of a sudden that something happens and then you're just in the middle of it. Uh, everything goes through a process. And if we begin to recognize the things that we're going through, sometimes we can catch these things before they get out of hand. And that's what we want to do. In this process, the buildup phase is characterized by cues that indicate anger is escalating. As stated, these cues can be physical, behavioral, emotional, or cognitive. As you may recall, cues are warning signs or responses to anger-related events. Events are situations that occur and may lead to the escalation of anger if effective anger management strategies are not used. Red flag events are types of situations that are unique to you and that you are especially sensitive to because of past events. So, and sometimes these could be uh, these red flag events could be uh, for traumatic experiences uh, that you may have had when you were uh, a youth. They could be, um, you know, like uh, come from post-traumatic stress disorder. If you were like uh, a service in the military or uh, people that have been to prison also suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, which I don't think is taken into consideration. A lot of times when we are trying to figure out why we keep acting out in certain ways. As you may recall, as we're talking about uh, here, cues, right? So as you may recall, cues are warning signs. So when it's talking about, again, these cues, right? And they use the word cues, but they are signs. And where it was talking about uh, emotional signs and behavioral signs. So the emotional cues are talking about the fact that, uh, one, anger is a secondary emotion. So it will generally be preceded by uh, one of the more primary emotions, which are going to be the things that make us feel vulnerable and make us feel weak. And anger comes in to uh, make us feel stronger and to help us to... Uh, deal with and address the situation. Behavioral cues are uh, the things, obviously behaviors, things that we do, right? So you might begin to ball up your fists, you might begin to pace back and forth. And sometimes, and even though these are behaviors, sometimes we might not even be conscious or even uh, noticing what we're doing at that time, right? But when we catch ourselves, it's a good idea to look into it and to try to figure out what exactly is going on with me. Because if we don't pay attention to that and we're not mindful of it, that's when it ends up catching us off guard and we may do something that we could regret later, right? And then uh, as it talked about uh, cognitive cues, right? So things dealing with the mind and uh, the way that we're thinking and generally uh, what this looks like is is the negative thoughts that we may have. We may have uh, violent thoughts of getting revenge on the person or or doing something else that um, that causes harm uh, to the person or people, right? So um, we want to take that into consideration as well. And then also uh, physical cues. So physical cues are different than behavioral cues. So again, behaviors are things that we're doing. Physical cues are things that are happening to our body. So like your heart rate beginning uh, to increase, uh, you begin to sweat, uh, you may begin to shake or something like that. 
These are all things that are physically happening to us and not necessarily something that we are doing. They're not voluntary acts. Okay. If the buildup phase is allowed to continue, the explosion phase can follow. The explosion phase is marked by a discharge of anger displayed as verbal or physical aggression. This discharge in turn leads to negative consequences. It is synonymous with a number 10 on the anger meter. And this is one of the things that we're trying to avoid, um, this explosion phase, right? So we don't want to just react to the situation and just, just explode out of anger. We want to be able to respond to the situation appropriately and make the most appropriate decision that's not going to cause us to uh, get in trouble and to cause more problems for ourselves. The final stage of the aggression cycle is the aftermath phase. It is characterized by negative consequences resulting from ver uh, verbal or physical aggression displayed during the explosion phase. These consequences may include going to jail, uh, making restitution, being terminated from a job or discharged from a drug treatment or social service program, being alienated from uh, family and loved ones, or feelings of guilt, shame, and regret. So again, um, a lot of times these, when we act out inappropriately with the anger, we end up um, alienating people away from us and uh, isolating ourselves, which in turn ends up making our anger issues even worse because we start feeling like, uh, you know, nobody cares for us and everybody's against us and such. So um, we don't want to do that. We don't want to. Uh, get to the point where we are um, playing the victim. The intensity, frequency, and duration of anger in the aggression cycle vary among individuals. For example, one person's anger may build rapidly after a provocative event and, within a few minutes, reach the explosion phase. Another person's anger may build slowly but steadily over several hours before reaching the explosion phase. So uh, different people, again, will process their anger and um, respond or react to the situation differently. Um, and some of us, uh, I was one who would uh, go off quick, right? I would, the anger would escalate quickly and I would become aggressive uh, very quickly, right? It, it doesn't necessarily happen the same for everyone, but because I was I was doing that, I always believed that that's just the way I was and I couldn't change it. And uh, later I found out that I absolutely could change those things and I could uh, change them in ways that were going to help me to continue to improve my life. Similarly, one person may experience more anger episodes <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, one person may experience more episodes of anger and progress through the aggression cycle more often than another person. However, both individuals, despite differences in how quickly their anger escalates and how frequently they experience anger, will undergo all three phases of the aggression cycle. So again, um, we go through these processes, though we may go through them differently, we still uh, all will experience these processes. And um, the more that we understand about this, the easier it will be um, for us to deal with them and to correct our behavior. The intensity of these individuals' anger also may differ. One person may engage in more violent behavior than another person in the explosion phase. For example, an individual may use weapons or assault someone. Another person may express his or her anger during the explosion phase by shouting at or threatening other people. Regardless of these individual differences, the explosion phase is synonymous with becoming verbally are physically aggressive. Notice, 
that the buildup phase and the explosion phase phases on the aggression cycle correspond with the levels on the anger meter. The points below 10 on the anger meter represent the buildup phase. The buildup of anger. The explosion phase, on the other hand, corresponds to a 10 on the anger meter. Again, 10 on the anger meter is the point at which one expresses anger through verbal or physical aggression that leads to negative consequences. So again, is there's nothing wrong with the fact that you become upset, but you don't want to just explode. You don't want to just act out. And these uh, phases that it's talking about um, in this section, it puts like a little, uh, like this little diagram right here where we have the uh, buildup, explosion, and aftermath, right? And right here, so where it's talking about uh, the explosion phase, then it has a little section that talks about outbursts. And um, these are the things that uh, cause us to begin to get in trouble. So um, in, when we in the buildup phase, instead of just exploding, we could choose to um, respond to the situation more appropriately or take a time out and then come back and deal with the uh, situation later. One of the primary objectives of anger management treatment is to keep from reaching the explosion phase. And as this, this mentioned, uh, the anger management treatment. So I would like to, to uh, mention that um, what we're doing here is anger management education, uh, not treatment. That there's a, there is a treatment uh, that people use for anger management, but it would be more uh, in depth uh, with a therapist and addressing uh, issues that are particular to you, right? We are, uh, educating ourselves on anger and learning to manage it uh, in a better way. And, and for a lot of people, this is what we will need, but it is a, a, a regular process that we need to continue to work on ourselves and, and do the things necessary to manage our anger. This is accomplished by using the anger meter to monitor changes in your anger. Using the anger awareness record to help you uh, pay attention to the cues or warning signs that indicate anger is building and employing the appropriate strategies from your anger control plan to stop the buildup of anger. If you prevent the explosion phase from occurring, the aftermath phase will not occur and the aggression cycle will be broken. If you use your anger control plan effectively. Your anger should not progress to a 10 on the anger meter. This is a reasonable goal to aim for. So again, um, it's helpful if we make a uh, anger control plan, which similar to like your relapse prevention plan, if you are, let's say in substance abuse recovery, um, you may uh, have made a, a relapse prevention plan. So the relapse prevention plan is, is to help you um, to get back on track, right, if you happen to re relapse with, with substance abuse. However, the relapse prevention plan also is to help you to prevent the relapse, to prevent you from ever relapsing. But if you do, then it also helps you to get back on track as soon as possible. And this is similar with the anger control plan. And a relapse with the anger can be as dangerous or as uh, problematic or even worse than a relapse with the substance abuse, right? Because of all of the negativity that's involved. So um, on this little uh, diagram that talks about the buildup, uh, explosion and aftermath, you know, there are a few things that characterize what that looks like. So for the buildup, um, we have increased heart rate, flushed or hot, clenched fists, pacing back and forth, feelings that underlie anger. And so when it's talking about feelings that underlie anger, again, it's talking about those more uh, primary feelings, those feelings that make us feel vulnerable, uh, hostile thoughts and self-talk, negative fantasies or images. Okay, this is all part of the buildup. So as you're building up and you're continuing to escalate, and that's another word that we could use. So instead of buildup, we could say escalation of anger. So the escalation phase, right? So as you are escalating, or the anger building up, um, you will 
uh, have some of these uh, symptoms, right? The increased heart rate or the clenched fizz, the pacing back and forth, hostile thoughts and self-talk, uh, negative fantasies and images, right? These are signs that we may, or excuse me, that we are becoming angry. Then with the explosion phase, again, it talks about the things included with uh, the explosion. It just lists um, physical or verbal aggression, destructiveness, or violence, right? So anything that's acting out, once you move from uh, just escalating and you're acting out on your anger, where you're, whether you're punching, slapping, hitting someone, or something like that, um, this is what is this is is part of that explosion phase, and this is what we actually get in trouble for, not the fact that we become angry. However, if we're not uh, learning to properly manage our anger, of course we're going to get in trouble. Um, then when it talks about the aftermath, so aftermath could really be called consequences, right? Consequence. So aftermath means the aftermath of what happened, what results from uh, you choosing to act out uh, on your anger. And so it mentioned uh, fire from a job, kicked out of a treatment, uh, restitution or other uh, financial costs, loss of family and or friends, guilt and shame. Right. Obviously, you can be fired from a job if you act out uh, violently at work or kicked out of treatment. You know, you get into a fight with one of the other clients. You may have to pay uh, restitution or some other fine from court if you go in because you committed uh, a crime or something. Loss of family or friends, you know, because people don't necessarily want to be around you. if You're always uh, acting out of your anger, uh, guilt and shame. Uh, also, because sometimes, you know, when you go back and think about the things that you were doing or what you've done, you know, you feel a certain way and, you know, you know, you're out of line. And as human beings, you know, we will have a tendency to, you know, to feel embarrassed. And but sometimes what ends up happening with the guilt and shame, we end up um, it ends up making our anger issues even worse. Um so let me see. So the um, response choice rehearsal. So and it's uh, also referred to as RCRs, right? So response choice rehearsal is referring to or is is a way uh, that we uh, try to help ourselves to de-escalate our anger or to deal with anger-related situations. So it, it gives here, you'll notice it has um, active responses and it has uh, passive responses, right? Um, and this comes from a different anger management book. So what we addressed above, um, it was coming from uh, substance abuse, uh, uh, a book called Anger Management for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Clients coming from the uh, SAMHSA website, it's a, a free resource and they have a, the uh, facilitator's guide and the uh, workbook, right? Um, somewhere in the course, I'll actually uh, put a link there so people can download it or maybe I'll uh, put a copy up, you know, in within the course. But uh, anyway, it's a, a free resource. So this other uh, thing right here is coming from another anger management book. Uh, that I use is called uh, the Real Solutions Anger Management Workbook. Uh, it was written by a therapist named uh, Rich Pfeiffer, who uh, is the head of the National Anger Management Association. And that's who I went through uh, to get my anger management certification. So anyway, these these uh, responses, so it has some active responses and they got passive responses. So we'll read through these and then, you know, look at them just a little bit. Okay, one, ask for what you want. And then it gives some examples. Um, I'm feeling what's bothering me is. And so obviously I'm feeling, and then in here in the brackets, it says what's bothering me is, that's what you're gonna uh, wanna put, right? You're not gonna say what's bothering me. You're gonna put what's actually your issue and what's bothering you as an individual, um, negotiate. What would uh, what would you propose 
to solve this problem, right? So you want to come up with something and you want to be able to be clear, right? Because if you're not clear about what it is that you need out of the, the situations to help solve the problem so that it doesn't continue to further escalate, you know, there's no way the other person is going to be able to um, address that, right? Because you don't even know what you want. Um, three, uh, self-care, right? So basically uh, taking care of yourself, right? This is very important uh, that we take care of ourselves, but also um, we need to, to look at it in this context. So self-care, if the problem, so again, it's talking about, it put this in brackets, so it's whatever the problem is, right? Um, so let's say if you continue to disrespect me goes on, I'll have to, and then it's saying your self-care solution, I'll have to leave and or dissolve our friendship or whatever in order to take care of myself. So you want to remember these, these types of responses, and these may be something uh, that you do with the person or you do them, uh, you know, just within your within your head and this is what you decide on right but this can be used in many different situations and what these responses are are supposed to help us do is to de-escalate our anger without letting it spin out of control and help us uh bring us into a more rational uh state of mind so that we can uh be clear on the uh next course of action that we need to take um and then it goes up here to number four uh, with the passive responses. Get information. What do you need in this situation? What concerns or worries you in this situation? What's hurting or bothering you? So here um, in the, the passive as opposed to the uh, uh, negative. Um, so with the, the active response, let's say, um, you notice that you're that you're actually doing something. You're uh, doing something that's more uh, assertive, let's say. So you're stepping out there, right? So you're, in number one, you were expressing your feelings about the situation and letting the person know exactly what's bothering you. And two, you know, you're negotiating um, and letting the person know uh, what would possibly solve the situation. And then uh, the self-care. Right. So you're letting the person know that if if this situation continues, you will have to take a uh, certain action in order to take care of yourself. And so this uh, next one, you're just kind kind of uh, receiving stuff. So you're receiving information. Right. So what do you need in this situation? What concerns or worries you in this situation? What's hurting or bothering you in this situation? Right. So again, and this is what you you are trying to understand. And when you're saying what worries you or what bothers you, sometimes it's it's not apparent, right? Because we will think that it's, you know, whatever the person did or said, but it may be something else going on with us that causes us to be overly sensitive to what someone else is doing. And so once we uh, really figure out what's actually going on, it may be a case uh, that we are able to begin to de-escalate because we see uh, that we're being overly sensitive. Or we may, you know, realize this exactly what we thought it was, and then we uh, figure out how to deal with that as well. Five, acknowledge. So what you want is, right? So you're acknowledging, uh, even acknowledging the other person. So on one, on one hand, on the first three and active responses, you're saying what you need to do and what would make the situation better for you. And then um, you're also uh, checking uh, with the other person and seeing what's going on. And you may it may help you to be able to work out the information. So what concerns or worries you is. So what hurts or bothers you is. Right. And then number six, withdraw. It feels like we're starting to get upset. I want to stop and cool off for a while. So this timeout is a big 
thing, right? So if you're in the middle of a heated argument with uh, your significant other or someone else, it is a good idea as things begin to escalate, especially if you feel yourself uh, going to turn either violent or um, have very uh, negative words coming out of your mouth, it's a good idea to take a time out until you can cool down some. Because a lot of times if you continue, then you may say or do something that you're not going to be able to take back, right? Especially uh, the words. I mean, obviously you can't take a hit back if you decide to hit the person that could potentially uh, put you in prison. But the words you say can be just as destructive because the person will carry those words along with them and it may um, could potentially uh, ruin your relationship because I mean, you can apologize and all of that, but once you've said certain things and spoke to the certain person a certain way and maybe called them certain names or, you know, brought up old uh, stuff, then, you know, that person is not going to be able to feel quite the same about you or with you. Um, and, and you therefore end up destroying the relationship. So it's going to be more helpful if you, uh, take a time out and with the plan to come back later and resolve the issue because you don't want to leave it unresolved. Unless, of course, you're dealing with someone that you're probably never going to run into again. But uh, most of us, a lot of times we end up having anger uh, sometimes with people who we actually care about. And in those cases, we want to be able to process that, work it out and uh, be able to move forward in a good way with these people. Okay, so another thing uh, that's going to be very helpful um, is the uh, anger logs, which I will include uh, like a downloadable copy of the anger logs for you to uh, use in order to track your anger. And uh, elsewhere, I actually go into uh, what the anger log is and how to use it. Okay, so um, hopefully um, you've been able to gain something from this. I would suggest, you know, that you go back in because you will you will have access um, to the information from the course. Go back in, uh, you know, check out the videos. Also, I will uh, put a link. Um, I got a uh, a uh, playlist, a YouTube playlist, where I've made you know some more uh, videos related to anger management. Um, you know, check out some of those. Um, I will also uh, be coming out with a more uh, advanced course as well, as well as a, a, a weekly course where I'm going to uh, put it where people will sign up for the community. Um, there will be a, you know, like a monthly charge, but it will have or it will give you access to a weekly uh, anger management class, like a live uh, Zoom anger management class where we will uh, discuss different issues related to anger I will go over uh, different course material or uh, uh, also and if um, the uh, people who are participating in the class choose to, we will also sometimes just have like a little section, a session where we, you know, just talk about different scenarios related to anger or even uh, give people an opportunity to, you know, just kind of vent and kind of get some stuff off their chest and stuff like that. So we will get into that. Also with that um, community plan, once I get that going, um, you will also be able to make different suggestions because it will be live. And so we will be able to do stuff um, a little bit differently. So uh, that's all we have now. This was lesson 10 and this concludes uh, this particular course. Um, I hopefully I will see you as part of the community. Oh, and don't forget to sign up for the affiliate program. So on the uh, website where you purchase the course, there's, if you look through the tabs, there's one of the tabs that's for affiliate. So look through the, it may be in a little square box and you hit the box and you want to go in and sign up for the affiliate uh, program. And 
Let me see if I can uh, go into that real quick. Let's see. That's not the one. Okay, if I can get this thing, get out of the top. There we go. Um, okay, okay. So what I'm going to do. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take us to um, the uh, the actual website where you will be doing your, um, or excuse me, where you purchase the uh, course. And I wanted to just um, be able to show you about the uh, affiliate program real quick before we uh, conclude the video. Because the thing with the affiliate program, if you sign up uh, for the affiliate program, right? And uh, so this is where you go in and you, you know, purchase the course, right? So you got uh, this page right here. And then, you know, you log into your account if you're a, a, a student, right? And I actually uh, made an account for... Uh, my own course with one of my other um, emails. And, uh, okay. Give me a second. This is my first time uh, going into it on this uh, particular computer right here. So it's sending me through all these uh, extra requirements. Okay, so once you go into uh, the website where you have your, or excuse me, where you purchased a course, and then you're gonna uh, hit the tab that goes for affiliate as soon as this, okay, here we go. All right, so you got this. So right here, see where it'll have your name and it has affiliates. If you hit the affiliate um, link, right, you can sign up to become an affiliate for uh, my program. And, and so what you would do is once you sign up and you become an affiliate, you will, you will end up getting, like, every time somebody uh, purchases the course, right, you'll end up getting a link that you can share on your social media and stuff like that. And every time somebody uh, hits the link, you, you definitely want to have your link in there because it will link back to your account and it will uh, create an invoice automatically for me to pay you $10 per uh, purchase if each time someone purchases uh, the course with your link. So you want to put the link in your social media and not just, uh, let's say, just tell people about the course. Um, and but if when they when they do purchase the course, you will uh, get ten dollars. And I understand ten dollars is not a whole lot. But if 10 people, uh, if you get 10 people to purchase it, that's one hundred dollars. And if you get 100 people to do it. That's, you know, a thousand dollars and so on and so forth. So it could add uh, potentially add up. Um, so anyway, that's just a way, you know, to help uh, bring a little value to you as well. So um, definitely, you know, look into that, check that out and, um, you know, check that out. And hopefully uh, you can get some you can get some benefit from that, you know, and maybe make a little pocket change as well. Obviously, um, it'll help me as well. And. That's all for now.